cared for the earth since the beginning of time. We are the stewards, the caretakers, the keepers of the land, air, and water. We are the indigenous people of the world, and we are using our traditional ways and science to protect Mother Earth. I'm Steve Sweethel, and welcome to Down to Earth. On our show today, we're heading to Western Canada, where the Asoyes First Nation has created a world-class green resort, heritage center, and vineyard. And later on the show, we'll travel to Copenhagen, where we'll meet Shivanas Jean-Baptiste, an agronomist and advocate for farmers in Haiti. It's winter in South Central British Columbia, and it's hard to believe that under this layer of snow is Canada's only desert ecosystem. But in a few months, the arid landscape will come back to life. At the Asoyuz Desert Cultural Center, Art is about to discover how this world-class facility was designed using green technology and traditional Aboriginal values. So nice to have you come to Osuyas Indian Band in the Okanagan Territory, and so we welcome you to our reserve and to our area. Hi, Namaskama, thank, thank you. This is the Inkamit Desert Cultural Center, and I just wanted to show you a few features of okay. the center because, you know, we believe in going green. And one of the features here is actually this, this the wood that you see, that's pine beetle wood. We thought it was good, it was a way of preserving some wood that normally would just be you know, destroyed and people wouldn't use it. Another thing that I just wanted to show you is a part of our rammed earth wall. What we did is we took the earth from around here and then they mixed concrete and sand, then they layered it. So each layer that you see is, is where it had a drying process, but we put a little bit of pigment color so that it would look like when you do an archeological dig in this area, when you dig down, you'll see different uh, layers of the earth. Protecting the fragile desert ecosystem is a priority for the Isoyus First Nation. The community's business ventures, including the Spirit Ridge Resort and Inkameep Cellars, have preservation plans that protect the region's indigenous plants and animals. At the Isoyus Desert Cultural Center, the staff frequently tag snakes as part of their monitoring program. And today, Bob will give Art some tips on avoiding a dangerous encounter with a rattlesnake. So we're gonna go to see rattlesnake country. Okay. We just keep our snakes uh, safe here and we uh, take care of the environment so that they're um, able to survive. This is where we're coming up to a village like we used to live in five or 600 years ago. This structure here, it's called the Kwaji, which means pit house. This is where we do our presentations on native history and cultures. We would talk about something like maybe snakes or our traditional culture, how it is in this specific area, because it's so dry and hot. And we are standing in the desert. You the are. The real desert. You are. What amazed me on the walk-in was all kinds of deer tracks, all kinds of coyote tracks. So when you're talking about preserving some of these lands and protecting snakes, you're actually protecting other species of animals as well. Uh, the other species, um, the endangered species like skinks and the various kinds of birds that only inhabit our area, those are the kinds that um, we would look at and have our biologist study and things like that. This snake mm -hmm. is a bull snake or a gopher snake. And this is one of the snakes that we have in our area that's common. It's non-venomous, you can pick it up when it's alive and not on a piece of wood like this. Mm -hmm. And um, this one's a, a constrictor. So it coils up and squeezes our prey. Look at the nice checkered pattern. And I mention that because when we look at the other one... That's the good. bite, the venomous. This is the venomous one. So this is our western mm -hmm. rattlesnake. This is the tail and all this is the body. And if you look them side by side, the patterns are similar. 
So that's one of our teachings here at the Culture Center. When we do our snake program, is to identify the two different kinds of snakes. And judging by the ground around here, they're both going to be very well camouflaged. Absolutely. Even if we were to see one over here in the summertime, you'd hardly notice it. Right. Yeah. So they're easy to stumble on if you're not wary and you don't know what to look for. Yeah. And you don't want to surprise No, you these. don't want to surprise this one. Okay. It can be a little bit tricky. Another thing I'd like to show you, you see the front part where it's the rammed earth? Well, up above is, we're built right into the landscape. I've brought you up here on the roof part of our building and you can see that it's just desert. And you can s smell the good sage and mm, all the wonderful smells. It's a beautiful smells. smell, I love that smell. And so it's just, what we've done here is we've built the center into, into the desert and we'll just, I'll just show you the, the roof. It's just, it's just part of the desert. And so you're looking down here at the center itself, and there's the roof. Blended and right into the earth. It is, and yet it keeps our building cool in the summertime and warm in the wintertime. If you want to catch a snake, I will teach you, and you will be safe at it so you won't get hurt. But some people are bringing snakes from other areas here? Other areas up and down the valley. Um, just to give them just a safe in a haven? General or, yeah. So this is like retiring home for rattlesnakes. It is. Really good home here, southwestern slope. Nice and warm. A lot of them are denned up up this there. This is what rock. we call our Rocky Teller slope up here. As far as you can see around the corner there is their home. So we are in, in absolutely no danger of getting bit by a rattlesnake in the winter such as this? No, as soon as the temperature reaches Because I have a thing about degrees. snakes, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you won't want to finish with you. <laughs> Would you like to try catching okay. a snake in there? I'll, uh, now when they remember? strike, they can go the length, their the whole length. lengths, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're, where's our little... Our sneak uh, up. And then I have to have this ready ahead of time? Yeah. You remember, you put it through. Make the bag. Yeah. All right. So when I come back this summer, we're going to do this with the real one. You can do that with the real one. We'll be with you, though. And then I get my partner. Get your partner to hold it. That's great. To hold it. And there's Mr. Sneak. Yeah. And be gentle with him. Be gentle. Yeah. Hold him up and he'll balance himself. Let him balance himself. He probably flattens out a little. He's not going to be as limp as our no. buddy here. <laughs> what are you doing to protect the snakes from your own development? We have a three foot high fence that goes all around our businesses. We have our own snake biologist uh, doing a walk of that fence uh, at least um, probably once a day to yeah. find out where the snakes are, are going through or sticking yeah. around mostly. Make sure his head is not up. Come to the edge to tie the knot. Yep, twist it up. There you go. Now, if I keep my hand above, there you go. Yeah, let it it's down. Not going to be go. able to bite through. He right? won't bite you. Yeah. Okay. Now we're ready to go back to the center. We believe we're the caretakers of the land. And I think that we're, we have the, we feel good. We have a good feeling about being caretakers of the land. So it sounds like with this balanced approach, you firmly have one foot planted in each world, the traditional world, as well as the modern world of economics. That's right, we do. We Finding a way do. to make that work. And I think, I think that that philosophy has gone clear back, you know, in time. I think that's always been uh, the goal of the Osseous Indian Band. And I think it's the goal, you know, of really First Nations people. Aboriginal people, you know, throughout the country believe that we are caretakers of the land. And if, if we are, then we have to move forward. And that, that's what we need to show and teach people. Because, you know, our earth and, and all the things that we enjoy, the animals, the water, the plants, all of it, you know, it has to, we all have to work in harmony. And so I think that we can teach that here at the center. 